So here we go again. This time we're en route to Tunisia. All right, I know, Tunisia isn't exactly in Europe, but with over 700 miles of sandy Mediterranean beaches and around 100 or so miles away from Sicily in Italy, we felt that these facts alone justified our step out of Europe itself. Besides, we're talking a flight under four hours and a country within Central European time. Yet another flight to the next destination. Yeah, from Tunis to Tosi. Yet another flight indeed, internally from Tunis to Toza in the far south. Or at least that's as far south as you can go in Tunisia without needing copious amounts of water. Thank you very much. Talking of drinks, our hotel was not uncommon in giving out the complimentary non-alcoholic cocktails on arrival. Yeah, don't leave the cameraman out, whatever you do. <laughs> Cheers. An early rise meant little sleep the night before, and no time to relax before hitting the road with our guide, Tarek. This is the road to Jibika. Well, more of an off-road dent in the desert scenery, really. And when we reached our destination and I'd sorted out the dent in my back, it was like a Clint Eastwood movie set, and certainly no place for shopaholics. I must get something for the mother-in-law. Something like these knickknacks or something. These are rather interesting. Mm, no, I don't think she'd like those. What's in here? This is interesting. Water and snake. Oh my god, it's alive! <laughs> Get back in! I don't think the mother in law would like that. How much are these? I'll have two. Tarek, where are we? <laughs> we are far from, far from stress. Just in the depth of the desert. Well, it's not the depth to tell you, it's the entrance to the desert. In a place called Chebika, as you, see, you can see, a mountainous place, deserted by people. It used to be, I mean, uh, lived with um, a small population hundreds of years ago. And because of erosion, they deserted the place. It's quite amazing as well, because looking in the rock structure, you can find fossils and all sorts. Yeah. So at one point, this was underwater. Well, this is what we found here, and that reflects the geological changes during the ages. It's sort of fossils from yeah. sea life? Yeah, I guess so, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> At the base of the mountain, and we find our first oasis, but this is to be the first of many that we'll see on our travels in Tunisia. One of the largest oases in the Sahara of Tunisia is Tosia. It boasts over 300,000 palms. And with that, of course, comes one of the largest towns. Now, if you're looking for a date, you don't need to use a dating agency here. This is just one or two that are kicking around. But they're not the best of quality. The finest ones are exported and sent to the rest of the world. Now that just proves that Italians are not the only people who talk with their hands. Tunisian farmers don't do too badly either. The colours and the smells from this bustling market are just, well, smelly, I suppose. Yeah, I think I've just sold the camera for this rug. Yeah, you can have the camera. Quite a tight schedule to move on here, but I don't think we're going places. Can you believe this happens anywhere? After passing a rather confused looking eunuch called Arthur on the front gate, we entered the land of Alibaba and Sinbad the Sailor, a rather unusually placed theme park. Old people, pregnant women, cardiac people, etc. We recommend you not to visit the cave and disclaim all responsibilities in case of problems or accidents. We thank you for your comprehension. I think, guys, the cave's the first place. Come on. Once in the cave, the sound effects were a bit like Rush Hour on the Piccadilly line, and you know how scary that can be. 
Now, I'm genuinely not afraid of the dark, but when you're plodding along through here and something unidentifiable pokes you in the ribs, well, it's a bit of a shock. It was more of a shock for the cameraman, though. They weren't joking. Now, this is something that I've always wanted to do. I'm told if I shout open sesame three times, it's going to work. We've got to give it a go. Open sesame. Open sesame. Third time lucky. Open sesame. The effects were so real, it had us all convinced we were walking into the real thing. I'm absolutely convinced that this is where all the bits from Christmas crackers come from. <laughs> These guys have been eating too much curry. For those of you that are wondering what Martin actually looks like, this is the best chance you're ever going to get to see it. Come on, Martin. That's enough excitement for one day. I say now, it's time for dinner. A night out by the campfire in a typical Bedouin tent mustn't be missed. And the locals are really chatty too. They do argue a little bit, though. Uh, it's lamb. Uh, vitamin. Vitamin. Have you got any mint sauce? <laughs> wow. You should have. They're off again. No matter how much I tried in my fluent Arabic, I couldn't get a word across at all. The cabaret was a self-motivated affair enjoyed by everyone, including our sound recorder's Phil, who managed to get the clap OK. The party continued on the way home. We drove by committee and thanked Allah they hadn't issued us with camels. Under a clear blue Tunisian sky, we made an early morning call on a genuine marketplace in Toza. I bumped into a passing Bedouin who insisted on passing well, on years' worth of experience and shopping oh, knowledge okay, to us. Okay. Saffron is made up of many, many plots. Yes, many plots. It is uh, interesting. And the couscous or it well. So, being a Bedouin, will you move on? Yes, Bedouin living on the Sahara, on the Sahara, but no all years. One if in the region or it is uh, you can live in it. But uh, for example, now in the winter, no region it is cold. It changes. You live inside. Yeah. You speak excellent English. Very good. Oh, excellent, but just a little. But I can speak very good Italianish and the German and the French. <laughs> and uh, my uh, my uh, original speak is Arabic. Yes, Phil right. speaks German. Yeah, yeah I, I, I speak German. I speak a bit in Deutsch. Yeah, I speak in Deutsch. Yeah, I was in Berlin for six years. Ach so, for, for six years. Hey, that's not, that's not no, the sound no, of the sound of the sound of the sound of the sound the sound of the the sound of the sound of the the sound of the the sound the 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 Many, uh, many give on and why? Yes, that's, 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 that's English. That's English. Excuse me, excuse me. Hang on, hang on. That's enough decent sound recorders. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, where were we? Thanks, chaps. Now, what was I saying? Yeah, sprechen Sie gut Deutsch und auch sprechen gut The next stop was a load of old cobblers. They're a bit short on choice, but very big on handmade. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, they are really beautiful, aren't they? Yes, it is good made. I'm not sure how the fashion would go down in the high streets of London. Yeah. But on, on no, the this desert. Look, for example, can you take this one on the winter on the summer? Yeah. And, yes, it is there. Uh, on the summer, can you this uh, open? But uh, on the winter, can you close? Yes. Right, right. For example, for example, for this one. Ah, yes, it's open for the summer. Yeah. I've thought of everything. Look. Here it is, but can you take on this yeah. summer? Yeah. But it's very nice on the 
And what's the leather? With the gents, uh, like. Which leather is it? Leather, yes, leather for... Uh, leather, is it camel leather? Uh, the camel, here it is camel leather. Yeah. But here, uh, tige, we have the tige. Tige, in Do of Dutch. Tige. Yeah, and it's tige. Nah, with meat. Oh, it's lamb. Lamb, yes, lamb. Oh, right, thank you, Phil. So it's sheep, sheep. Yeah, it's very really sheep. It's very handy having a sound recorder that speaks German, don't you think? Yeah, it's good. This must be what you call a dating agency. Yes. But this that is yes, this is, this is uh, for economic here. This economic. Is, yes. Something I've always wanted to do, guys. What's this? <laughs> ah, <laughs> blind date. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's an English you, joke. Can you? Uh, You've just had a chunk of yeah. this one. It is very really, uh, so good. It's, uh, mm, very good. Do we have to make for this one? Schmeck it liquor on the uh, Dutch. Schmeck it liquor. Why do we Sch keep going back to German? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's right. good, very good. Do you celebrate Christmas? Just here, we don't have a Christmas. But, but you celebrate the New Year. The next yeah, stop was Dues, and we like to feature sport, but the last thing that we expected to find there was a microlite flying school. This crowd are basically winging their way around the whole of Tunisia. I'm sorry, but we couldn't bring you any aerial pictures. We weren't allowed to film because of a nearby military base. This kind of uh, air aircraft is uh, special because it is uh, less than uh, 150 kilos. It's very light and uh, they can land everywhere. Here it's a very big place to land, but sometimes we land on a track, we land everywhere. Uh, and uh, sometimes we stop where there is a cafe to have a drink. You just have to land. It's not difficult. It's ab absolutely not difficult. And what we do now, we have a department of ini initiation. It means that if you want to come in the desert, and you want to discover, you can, you can learn. You can, you can learn in two hours, you can pilot. We, we form, uh, we teach to uh, a girl yesterday, and she, she was for the first time, and she was in the, in the front seat, and she piloted wow. at the moment, Excellent. immediately. And it's a fantastic, uh, uh, it's impossible to discover the desert like this because you can fly just three or four meters over the sand like this. It's fantastic, very beautiful. from me today. Realistically, across the desert, the only form of transport is a good old four-wheel drive camel. <laughs> I hope I've got it in four-wheel drive, actually. Has anyone got a map? The sunsets here are just quite fantastic. Hey, he said I couldn't ride a camel. Marche, marche. Dima Yet another blue sky Tunisian morning, and a little saddle sore, I decided to go for a swim. What nobody told me is that the tide just doesn't come in this far. And what the pictures don't show is that this is the winter, and it is actually freezing. 
Who'd have a deck chair franchise on a beach like this? Still, I think all this weight I'm working on is strong. Where the crew are? I'm sure they said take the second dune on the left. I said to the porter, does it ever cloud over? He said, what's cloud? I should have taken those microlight lessons, I think. I'd be able to see how far up the tide is. I go out for an early morning swim. The rest of the crew opt for lying. There's no sea. Come to that man, there's no water to be found. Ah, oh, stop it. I don't wait till the tide gets to me. As you can see, uh, this is the gateway to the desert, the Sahara, and it's now one of the coldest per period, and you can see the contrast between me and you wearing your swimming short and me wearing my coat. This is the winter now, yeah. but just how warm does it get in the summer? Well, 38 in the shade. Wow. So I wouldn't be able to be doing this in the summer either. No, you will have, I mean, a special, very special... A suntan lotion. Suntan yeah. lotion, yeah. <laughs> just but to protect yourself. Just how far does this desert go on now? As far as the Sahara is concerned, it would be about, I'm not that exact, but about 3,000 kilometers. It really is beautiful. It's really back to earth, yeah? Back to earth and back to nature, and so especially far, very far from stress. Now the crossing from Doos to Matmata is not for mincing jessies. It's like this all the way. One thing's for certain, it's not a trip for the comfort-conscious tourist. But it is a journey which reveals the contrast in desert country. And contrary to what you might expect, the scenery is constantly changing here at the edge of the Sahara. destination, Mat Mata, is the land of the troglodyte. They're sort of cave dwellers, but to miss such an opportunity to see a unique place like this, despite the quality of the road out here, would be to miss a very special piece of Tunisia. You might find the restaurant a bit claustrophobic though. And don't forget to order what's known as the brick. It's a very messy sort of egg-like thing. The most striking thing about this part of Tunisia is it's like walking around one of the biggest film sets in the world. In fact, films like Indiana Jones and Star Wars were all shot here. And there's even a touch of Hollywood in the sign to Mat Mata. People actually still live here in Mat Mata. Life with the locals goes on without change. The bread-making methods are 3,000 years old. The Africa core came a little later, and the local eau de vie has a kick like a camel. <laughs> Give the camera a <laughs> ah, That's all you need, a shy hostess. How can you have stage fright? Cheers. <laughs> At last, after 150 miles of back-jerking, bouncy off-roading, we're now at a halfway stop between Doos and Gerba. And right now, I'm going to get out, go into the hotel, and find myself a new bottom. <laughs> I'd booked an early call outside yet another clear sunny day on the Tunisian calendar. Oh, good morning, do come in. Now take a look at this. I have to say this is the best hotel that we've found on our travels so far to date. It's only three star, but it's more like a four star hotel and at 40 dinars tonight, that's around 30 pounds, it's very good value. And what's more, you can't say that there are many hotels with a back door as well, which takes you to your own garden. Ta-da! Remember what I was saying about film sets? Well, how's this for the life of Brian?
Not the best accommodation we've found so far, but certainly the cheapest. Just a little humour to keep us going. Well, that's enough of that sand and stuff. Here we are. We've travelled right from the southeast of Tunisia to the very tip of the southwest. And our final destination lays behind me the island of Gerba, and it's linked by an eight mile Roman causeway. And so after travelling through the dusty deserts of the Sahara, here we are in Gerba, which boasts literally mile after mile of sandy beach and true Mediterranean sea. And although it's December, it is actually swimmable. Um, after you, of course. Welcome to Haggle City. The crew and me are getting pretty much used to starting with a ridiculously high price and settling for a ridiculously low one. Like many markets, it's the expected thing. But when it came to the fish market, well, I was completely outclassed. And lunch was baked bass. Yes. But our German speaking sound man isn't a fish lover. Talk about setup. That'll teach him to try and steal my show. Pork chops. At last, something for the mother in law that isn't a dead scorpion or a live water snake an open-air pottery with a do-it-yourself section. For the ultimate present for my mother-in-law. <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm going to make a, um, a long, sort of tall, squidgy thing at the moment. <laughs> oh, my God, it's getting out of hand. Shall I make a teapot? <laughs> um, well, I can make a... A hat, a pterodactyl, a brooch. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Honestly, not broken. So what about the nightlife here in Gerba? Well, the only nightclubs you'll find are in the hotel establishments. But it does exist, and we found it. Some of the music's a mixture of European and traditional Tunisian. Mostly European, mainly for the tourist benefit. But it's all danceable, and it brings back all sorts of memories from the background music that we listen to all the time in Britain's ethnic restaurants. <laughs> And so, from the desert to the beaches to the nightlife, now how much more varied can you be than that? Till the next time.